Hi, welcome back to Snap Tax Threat Snapshot, where we break down threats and show you how to detect them. My name is AJ King. I'm the Director of Threat Research here at SnapTac, and today we're going to be digging into the XZ backdoor. Let's break it down. All right, so XZ is a data compression library and some command line tools. And I'm, it's been around for a while. Um, it is utilized in a lot of Linux distributions. Um, but luckily this backdoor was discovered before this X, the XZ versions got two stable versions of the, the Linux distros. So most of the distros that were affected, you had to be on the bleeding edge um, version to actually see this in your environment. Uh, however, you could still get those tarballs and actually install these manually. So it's still something to think about if, you, if you're doing that in your environment. Um, but on March 29th, it was discovered in 2024 and CISA put out an alert, a pretty short one, not a ton of info here, but Red Hat had uh, given this CVE 2024-3094 and that's when they specified there's malicious code that was embedded. This was a um, supply chain attack that was actually very, pretty complex uh, and we'll get into that a little bit. Um, but this was just kind of letting everyone know, hey, heads up, this is this is happening, so be aware. Uh, shortly thereafter, more information started coming out, uh, and you could find the open wall communication where Andreas, the Microsoft engineer who found this, kind of posted his thoughts or his discovery here, and it really gets into some detail and breaks it down. Um, but basically, he was troubleshooting an SSH um, performance issue on a Debian uh, system. And he ended up figuring out that there was a backdoor in XZ causing that SSH slowdown. Um, so from there, we're going to focus more on detection in this video, but there's tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of different write-ups that get into the details and the nitty gritty of the supply chain attack. If you want to understand that better and just and hear the story of how that happened, it is pretty fascinating. There's some social engineering involved and in, in things it took since 2021 this this user had been building trust to get to the point of being able to get this backdoor in place and was very close to getting it into stable versions and luckily it was detected before then so this is a pretty scary example of what could be happening in other projects so definitely something to uh, put in your threat model and think about um but yeah very interesting uh story to read here the XZ backdoor, so once it came out, there was uh, things like XZBot that came out and tools that allowed uh, researchers to utilize that backdoor for you know research purposes and testing. Um, it provided lots of different functionality, but the, the one that helped you use the backdoor was you could patch the lib LZMA um, file to utilize your own ED448 public key. And this allowed you to then access that SSH backdoor. Um, we use that in our uh, threat session here. And basically, we just went in there, used, uh, put in our own public key, and then ran some commands from the attacker box, like outputting ID into a temp file. And then from there, establishing uh, a reverse shell over port 444 and then executing who am I, right? Just to see the activity happening, commands being run over that reverse shell. So if we go down, you can see that there's some, some detections hitting on this and we have two red stars placed and that's where the initial, just a command was being ran from um, using XZBot and then a reverse shell was actually getting initiated. Uh, so if we get into those logs, we could see for the first one, this is that initial who am I command being ran using XCBot on the attack machine. And you'll notice that there's that tax C there. That's not something you're normally going to see from commands being run on a system, right? So if you see that there is, uh, unless someone explicitly used it, which they usually wouldn't, um, that's, that could be an indicator of something suspicious going on. Um, but this kind of this is just the process creation detection here for this specific XCBot using XCBot to run the command. Uh, the other one is showing that command establishing that connection to the attacker machine over port 444. This is also right process um, creation here. And an interesting thing you can do is if you start detecting uh, odd activity like this, especially if you're seeing a reverse shell being created, 
grab the, um, let's see where it is here, the, the terminal session ID. Um, and then you can create a, a simple search like this and just table it out and say, okay, for that terminal session ID, what commands were run? That'll show you all the commands related to that terminal session. And then you can get a good idea of what the attacker was doing. So in this case, right, we see that they ran the command to create the reverse shell and then they ran who am I? Uh, but if there's more, you could really like get into the details of, of what happened and what the attacker was doing um, or how they pivoted. Um, so detection wise, we have uh, several detections. The first one, this is looking for suspicious uh, SSH child processes. So this is again, gonna be looking at process creation, looking for that suspicious like SSH uh, parent image with the TAC T or TAC C and um, just looking for something. Again, this is something you may detect non-malicious activity with, but it's not that common for people to be running things with the taxi uh, in there. The next one is a connection. So this is gonna be a, um, this is going to be a network connection where you're actually looking for a host key algorithm that is normally used. So this client and host key alg is, these are common uh, combinations here for this backdoor when it's being used. So looking for that, you could see those network connections that potentially are suspicious and should be investigated. Uh, another one, some netcat. These are some, uh, you'll see several of these are somewhat similar, where this is looking for a network connection with a netcat being utilized. Um, and usually when you're seeing netcat, yes, there's something going on with a reverse shell. Again, maybe it's being used legitimately, but it's always worth investigating uh, any any netcat activity. Um, and here's another one. This is looking at process creation uh, versus a network connection. So this is looking for a specific netcat usage in uh, on a system. And also again, looking for like tac C, tac E. Um, we have some Sigma community rules by the, the awesome Sigma people. Um, we have, again, this is one that goes in putting in uh, some of the, the similar things here with like tac C, looking for the SSHD and command line contains root. So it's really breaking it down with a, a few more things in here. And um, the last one here, we have the netcat reverse shell. So this is going in again, similar process creation, looking for NC netcat. So a lot of this is really focused on netcat. So this isn't, these detections aren't gonna be specific to XZ only. This These detections are gonna work for a lot of reverse shell activity in, in the environment. So running hunts for these, you, you might find something. It doesn't necessarily mean it's always gonna be XZ, right? So just keep that in mind as you um, you do your hunts. Um, that's, that's pretty much what we have here today. Feel free to log into our platform with a community account, explore some of these community detections uh, and utilize them in your environment. Um, as always, uh, hope this helped and we'll talk to you again next time.